Okay. We'll get everyone else caught up on the notes here uh, in a bit. All right. So let's just continue with where we're at. So we are combining like terms, right? Combining like terms. Okay. So the most important thing is to make sure that when we combine like terms, it's just like the warm up. You combine similar variables with similar uh, other similar variable terms and constants with constants. Constants are just numbers without a variable. Okay. So if we look here, I'm looking at problem number 12 on page two. Okay. Problem number 12 on page two. Now problem uh, number 12 on page two. I start with my X. We always start with alphabetical order and X comes before Y. So we're going to start with X. And I see here I have an X squared. So I underline it. And then I ask myself, are there any other numbers or terms that have an X squared? The answer is no, I don't have any. So what do I do? I draw this arrow and I say, come on down. Okay. And I just write, write it there because it has nothing to combine with. So I just leave it. Now, once I've decided that there's nothing to combine with this one, I'm going to go ahead and scratch it out because I don't want to look at it anymore. And I don't want to make myself confused. And then I ask myself, are there any other variables that have an X in it? Well, yes, I have an X, Y and an X, Y. Yes, there are two variables, but X does come first. So I'm going to deal with these here now. I have a 2xy. Are there any other terms that have an x and a y directly next to each other? Yeah. The negative 7xy here, right? So because those are the same, I can combine those two. What is 2 plus negative 7? Yep. What do you mean the opposite? I said 2 plus negative 7. So yeah, so you see this minus? Okay, I'm gonna treat it as it's saying that's negative seven, not just minus seven. So anytime there's a subtraction sign in front of the number, you assume that number is negative, okay? So combining, and the reason why I do that is because combining by definition means to add. Combining means adding. So that's why I say, well, there's a minus sign here, I'm going to make sure this is thought about as a negative number. That's why I'm saying, so I understand what you're saying is the opposite, but it's just with that minus sign. Okay. So really I have is two plus negative seven, but it's the same thing as saying two minus seven. They're the same thing. It's just another way of saying it. But what is two minus seven? Negative five, negative five. And what was the variable with them? X, Y. So I just write them right there. Now, am I done with the X, Y? Yeah, because there's no other X, Y's together to put together. So I'm done and I'm done. There's nothing else to combine with it. Okay. Now, what is left? What do I have left in my problem? 4Y squared. Is there anything to combine with that 4Y squared? So what I do is come on down, positive 4y squared. Looking at what I rewrote, is there anything else to combine? No. So what does Coach Kim will do? He does his little half box to say this is my final answer. That's it. That's all it is. That's combining like terms. We're not solving for nothing. That's it. You just make it smaller. That's what combining is. You're taking something that's long and making it small because the long stuff makes me freak out and gives me anxiety. So I combine things to make it look smaller, nicer, and neater. We're not solving anything. We're just making things smaller right now. We'll get to the solving Trust me, we'll get to it. But right now, we're just making things smaller. Questions, comments, concerns, or tribulations? Sweet. Time for everyone's least favorite part. Geometric applications. Okay, you're probably like, Coach Kimball, we're in algebra. 
Why are we talking about geometry? Okay. Well, geometry requires you to know algebra. Surprisingly. Okay. Geometry is not just shapes. You also have to do algebra. Okay. This is why you learn algebra before geometry. So my directions say give the perimeter of each figure as a simplified expression. Who can tell me how to find perimeter of literally anything? Add all the sides. Just add all the sides. Add them. Okay. So what that's saying is, looking at example 13 here, okay, I have a triangle. So how many sides do I have? Three. Okay. So if I want to know the perimeter, which means just add all the sides, I'm going to take each one of these three sides and I'm going to take the first side and I'm going to add it to the second side and then I'm going to add it to the third side. So what's happening is I take that shape, find the perimeter by just combining the three sides together. Now I can just say, don't look at the shape anymore. Now I have what I was doing up here, just regular old expressions. And I ask myself, and always do the variable first, okay? Do I have anything that looks similar to the 2x? What? The 3x and the x. Now, if I just have an x by itself, what number do we assume is in front of it? One. One. Nice. You have no idea how difficult that was for kids last year, okay? That was a crazy concept for them. So now I can combine these numbers. I have two total x's, so I'm going to do it like this. I have two x's, then I add three more x's to it, and then I add one x to it. How many total x's do I have here? I have six x's. That's all we're doing. Okay. Did it. Did it. Done it. What about the plus one? Is there, ooh. Ooh. That's a, that's a big oof. Is there an X there? So is it considered part of the X? No. Is there anything that is just a number? It's just plus one, right? It's all we have left. So if that's all we have left, plus one. Just add it. Just add it to the end. Not add it, but put it on the end. Questions, especially my people that just came back. Uh, put it up and because we're gonna so the, those math reviews that we did uh, when we go the day we do our test review uh, you'll turn those in for a grade and uh, yeah you'll turn it in for a grade y'all don't have to worry about the reflection not on the first one all right so we talked about triangles, so I'm not going to do uh, 14. Let's talk about 15 because it looks different than the other three. All right. To find the perimeter, y'all told me that I have to add all the sides. Looking at this rectangle, do I have all the sides values given to me? Some are saying no, some are saying yes. Okay. Both of y'all are correct. Okay? No, I don't visually have all the sides. However, my knowledge of rectangles says that I do. What is interesting about rectangles? Perfect. The opposite sides are the same. So if my right-hand side is y plus 2, that means the left-hand side is also y plus 2. 
if the top is negative 3y minus 5, then the bottom is also negative 3y minus 5. That's why both of y'all who said yes and no are correct. Because no, they didn't have it there for me, but yes, I do have the values because I know my attributes of a rectangle. Do I have enough info to now combine things? Yeah. So I have negative 3y minus 5, so that top one. Then I have plus negative 3y minus 5, bottom one, plus y plus 2, plus the last y plus 2. That is long, ugly, and gross. This gives me anxiety, okay? So I want to make it simple on myself, and I want to combine things to make them smaller. And when we combine things, we always start with our variables first. I don't have any x's, but I do have y's. So I have a negative 3y. What else do I have that has a y? Negative 3 and these two y's over here. So if I did it like this, negative three y, negative three y, positive y, positive y. These are algebra tiles, okay? These two will cancel each other out, and these two will cancel each other out, and what am I left with? I am left with four negative Ys. Used it, used it, used it, done it. So I had negative 3, negative 3, 1 and 1, created 0 pairs here, canceled each other out, and I was left with 4 negative y's. Now I have these constants left over, where I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, one, two. These cancel each other out, that cancels each other out, cancels each other out, cancels each other out. How many constants am I left with? Negative six. Questions, comments, concerns, or tribulations? Little hinkle pinks. Conundrums, kerfuffles. Yo. If they're really simple, I know they're really simple. No. Good question. I like that. Y'all good? All right. Let's turn to the last page. Not the very last page, but page number three. Last page of the day. All right, we're going to talk about distributive property. Now, in eighth grade, y'all should have learned this kind of near the end of the school year. Okay, distributive property. Um, distributive property is basically when you have a term, any term, directly outside of a parentheses. Okay. What you do is you distribute said term to everything in the parentheses. To give you a real world example, I am a teacher that holds the notes packets. Y'all walked into my room and y'all picked up the notes packets. Y'all distributed the notes packets to yourselves. So I had something and I distributed it to all of you. So every single one of y'all got one. 
That's distributed property. I have something and I give it to everybody. I distribute it. That's what distributed property is. I have A. Everything inside the parentheses gets A. So that means my B has an A and my C has an A. Everything in the parentheses gets what's ever directly outside of it. For example, some actual number examples, so it's not just letters, okay? Number examples here. I have a seven, okay? Coach Kimball has a seven. All of you have an X plus four. I'm going to distribute all of you a seven. So this X gets a seven. And this four gets a seven. Now when we distribute, distribute means multiply. So when I take this seven and I distribute to the four, I now have seven fours, seven groups of four. So what is seven groups of four, AKA seven times four? 28, okay? Now that four is a what? Positive, so I have positive 28. And that's it. That is it. All right, let's look at number two. Same thing. I have a number directly outside the parentheses that needs to be distributed to everything inside said parentheses. Now the number outside of the parentheses, is it a positive number or a negative number? It's a negative. So when I distribute it, the negative goes with it. So look here, listen very carefully. Negative five times positive M. What's a negative times a positive? Negative. Negative times a positive is a negative. So I have negative 5 times m, which gives me negative 5m. Now, my strategy that helps me because I have ADD and I get distracted easily, as soon as I use something, I scratch it out. So I use that M, now I'm gonna scratch it out. I'm done with it. That's what I use to help with my ADD. And it's a good tool for anyone and everyone to use. Now I wanna distribute, AKA multiply, the negative five to the second term in the parentheses. What number is in there there? What is that, huh? Negative two, sorry, I didn't hear you the first time, which is why I asked again. Okay, negative two, there's a minus sign, the subtraction sign in front of the two. We consider that negative. So I have a negative five times a negative two to give me positive 10. A negative times a negative is a positive. Questions, comments, or concerns? Fantastic, because that's my answer. All right, now let's look at number five, because that one really looks different, because it has what in it? Fractions, because everybody loves fractions. I know, I'm being sarcastic. Okay, so treat it like a normal number. Okay, I need to distribute that 1 6 to everything inside the parentheses. So I have 1 6 times 3 fifths. Okay, when multiplying fractions, it ain't no problem. It's just the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. 1 times 3 is 3. 6 times 5 is 30. 
Multiplying fractions ain't no problem. It's the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. Listen for uh, my rap to come out, out on SoundCloud. Just kidding. I wouldn't want to put y'all through that pain. All right. Now, can this fraction be simplified? 3 over 30? Yeah. yeah. What are they both divisible by? Uh, three. 3. They both can be divided by 3, which would give us 1 tenth. Thank you, checkers. Okay. So I multiplied 1 6 to the 3 fifths. Okay. Now, that 3 fifths had what with it? X, so my one tenth will also get an X. Am I done with the three fifths? Yeah, scratch it out so you don't look at it again. Now I have everyone's least favorite thing a fraction times a whole number. In order to multiply a fraction to a whole number, you need to take that whole number and put it over a certain number. One. Any whole number can be made into a fraction by putting it over one. And then multiplying ain't no problem because it's the blank times the blank and the blank times the what? No? Top times top, bottom times bottom. Okay? Okay. 1 times 18 is 18. 6 times 1 is 6. Now, critically thinking here, can 18 be divided by 6 to get a whole number? Three. What is that whole number? 3. Positive 3. Make sure we reduce fractions. Make sure you reduce fractions. Yes, sir. Question? No, just stretching? Stretching. Questions, comments, and concerns? Wow, I'm a terrible singer. For real, though, any questions? I know fractions suck. I get it. I understand. I'm with you. Totally with you on that. But it's good to know, especially if you become like an engineer or a construction worker who has to measure out stuff also. Fractions are huge in construction work. We good? Okay. Last part of the notes. Now, let's say you're given an expression and I ask you to simplify it but you notice that there are parentheses. So to simplify an expression means to ensure that there are no parentheses and no like terms. So when you are given an expression, aka like number seven here, and it has parentheses, it's your job to get rid of the parentheses. And how do you get rid of the parentheses? You distribute. Distributing removes parentheses. Flat out. That is your first step from here on out. Get rid of parentheses first. Step number one was solving anything. Get rid of the parentheses. I'm going to take this eight and I'm going to distribute to everything in the parentheses. What operation is distribution? Multiplying. Thank you. Okay. What is eight times two? So I have 16x, because x was with it, just bring it down with it, okay? What is eight times negative three? Negative 24. Negative 24, good, done with that. Is this negative six on the, over here on the right, is it inside the parentheses? Yes or no? No, so do I need to distribute to it? No, because it's outside the parentheses. So what do I do? Come on down. Have I now eliminated parentheses? Yes. Step one is done. Awesome. Okay. Step one is now done. Step two. 
combine like terms. Do I have any like terms in my new expression that I just created? Yeah. What are the two like terms? Nice. Y'all are saying the negative two. Perfect. So I can combine those. 16 minus 6. What do I get? 10. So I now have 10 X's. Does anything combine with the 24? No. So I scream what? Come on down. You don't have to scream it during the test, but you know, your choice. But come on down. 10 X minus 24. Wow, I got really country voiced just then. I am country, so just be aware. Are there any terms to combine now? No. What's that TikTok? Hey, uh uh. And then they do something weird. Yeah, I'm on TikTok, I know. Okay. 